Returning now to one of our top stories, almost 1 million Centrelink recipients will see a 6% boost to their payments from today. Joining me now live is the Australian Council of Social Service Chief Executive Cassandra Goldie. Cassandra, thank you so much for joining us. We know that 2023 was a really tough year for many, particularly due to the cost of living crisis. Will this year look better for those who receive benefits thanks to this 6% increase? Yeah, well, Danica, Happy New Year to you and everybody watching. I want to particularly uh, send a message to people who are struggling the most um, that we're going to do everything we can to make 2024 better. Uh, look, this indexation um, for people relying on youth allowance, every dollar was going to help people. There's no question about that. But it does not get these key payments to the level that will lift people out of poverty. I mean, our cost of living uh, research towards the end of now last year showed that people relying on these kinds of payments were going without food, they were going without, you know, uh, heating and cooling, and we've got extreme weather all over the country now. Um, so what people are going without is very serious. So we want to see action. We do want the government to go much further with its approach to tackling cost of living, particularly for people on the very lowest incomes. So what will be enough then for people who are living in po poverty? What sort of a figure uh, would be appropriate then? Well, we're urging the Albanese government to take the best of the advice that it is receiving. The Independent Economic Inclusion Advisory Committee, of which I am a member, uh, recommended in the lead up to last year's budget a substantial increase to job seeker and youth allowance. They recommended that the payment should be lifted to at least 90% of the pension rate, which would bring it from where it is now at $54 per day up to $70 per day. I mean, ACOS, we say it should go higher than that, uh, but that is the expert committee advising this government about what it should do on income support payments. And so these indexation arrangements today, as I say, every dollar will help to make no question, but we need the government now to do the right thing because the cost of living crisis is real for people on low incomes. This is not a question of how many coffees can I have this week. It's a question of whether people can afford to keep the roof over the head or face homelessness, whether they're able to eat three meals a day or just one. Um, and as I say, being able to do at least some calling in often hot boxes, rental properties that they're trying to keep. Um, which are often very poorly insulated, et cetera. And we know in the recent mid year economic financial update, there were no cost of living relief measures for Australians. In your view, has the government done enough to address the cost of living crisis? Look, there have been some important um, changes made by the government over the last year. Um, some of that assistance around, for example, medical expenses and medicines um, will help. Um, there were some modest increases to some key payments like the parenting payment single in the May budget that helped about just under 60,000 people. But we're talking about over a million people who are relying on these really low payments now. Um, and so they haven't done enough. Um, we would recommend that they retarget the expenditure. Those stage three tax cuts at the high end of the income levels are very generous. Uh, they are giving money to people who actually don't need the money. And if those stage three tax cuts go through, it will fuel inflation in that discretionary spending in a way which is not useful for the economy or the community. And instead, retarget some of that expenditure to finally fixing the adequacy of our key payment, like the unemployment payment, Job Seeker. It's been woefully inadequate for far too long, Danica. Every one January, ACOS comes on to say we must fix this. We know how to fix poverty um, and I really hope that 2024 is the year that we do it. Well, fingers crossed. Cassandra Goldie, appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much.